Hey guys, and welcome to lesson 7.6, Applications of Rational Functions. So we'll start off with this first example here. It says that salt water is flowing into a large tank that contains pure water. The concentration of salt is given by the variable C, and time is given by T in minutes. Um, and the question says, what happens to the salt concentration? So what happens? to C of T, so what happens to your function, as T gets very, very large. So really what this question is asking us is what is the horizontal asymptote? In order to find that, we want to compare the degree of the numerator and compare that to the degree of the denominator. Now I'm just going to rewrite it in proper standard form where the variables come first and then constants later on. So we can see that um, we do have a horizontal asymptote here because the degree in the numerator is equal to the degree in the denominator. So that tells us to find our horizontal asymptote we actually need to divide the leading coefficients. So a horizontal asymptote is C equals, we'll take the numerator divided by the denominator. Okay, and C is actually measured in grams per liter as stated above in the question. So that's all we had to do for part A was um, see what happens to the function, what does your function approach as time gets very large. Now in part B it's saying or when, so you know we have to solve for T. When does the salt concentration in the tank reach 3.75 grams per liter? So just to rewrite the function, we need to solve for T when the concentration is equal to 3.75. So we quickly do that substitution, 7, 3.75, and then we'll solve for T. So at this point we will multiply both sides by 25 plus t. So on the right side, the 25 plus t's cross each other out, leaving us only with the 10t. And on the right side, we will distribute. So at this point, I will move all the t's to one side and keep constants on the other. So we'll divide both sides by 6.25. Okay, so as a therefore statement, the, the salt concentration will reach 3.75 grams per liter after 15 minutes. Okay, in example two, an economist for a sporting goods company gives two functions, um, a revenue function given as R of X and a cost function given as C of X um, that help indicate the production of new snowboards. Um, we have to note that X is the number of snowboards produced in thousands. So what we first want to do is determine an equation to represent profit. Now if you'll recall from last unit, profit is actually just revenue minus cost. So at this point, we'll sub in the function for revenue, so negative x squared plus 10x, and then minus, now whatever I put here, I must put inside brackets, so that it will remind me that I actually need to distribute that negative sign. So our profit function is given as negative x squared plus 10x, this time minus 4x, and then minus 5. And if we simplify that just a little bit, we end up with uh, negative x squared plus 6x, and then minus 5. Now we want to, in part B, determine an equation that represents the average profit. To take an average of something, we need to find out the total number, and then we'll divide by the number of snowboards produced. So we'll take our profit, which is given by negative x squared plus 6x minus 5, and we'll divide by x thousand snowboards. So in part C, it says determine the production levels that would ensure the company has a positive average profit. So the function we just created, the average profit, must be greater than zero. OK, 
Okay, so basically we want to find when does negative x squared plus 6x minus 5 all over x, when is that positive? So the first thing I'm going to do actually is um, before I factor the numerator, I'm going to common factor a negative just so that our leading coefficient of x squared here is positive. So now we can go ahead and factor. So, so at this point, we'll create a sign line. Okay, and on our sign line, we must put in our x-intercepts. And because we factored, we can clearly see that at 1 and at 5, we'll have x-intercepts. We also need our vertical asymptotes, which we can, again, clearly see from the bottom um, at 0. So we'll place all these onto our sign line. Now, one thing to note is that uh, before we go ahead and check all of these intervals, this interval where x is less than 0 is actually irrelevant. We don't need this interval because, again, remember that x represents the number of snowboards that are being sold. We can't sell a negative number of snowboards. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll do a test value in between 0 and 1. We'll try x equals 0 0.5. So, don't forget this negative out here, so we'll have a negative value times, well if I subbed in 0 0.5 into that first bracket, we'd still have a negative value, and same with the third bracket, all divided by some positive value. So three negatives all together will make a negative interval. Now let's try a value in between 1 and 5. Let's say try x equals 2. So again, we have this negative on the outside. If I subbed in 2, the first bracket would actually give us a positive value, but that second bracket would still be negative. Subbing into, into the denominator is also positive. So altogether, we only have two negatives, which will make that particular interval positive. And then finally, let's try something that's greater than 5. So x equals 6. We do have that negative on the outside, but both of these brackets will actually become positive, and same with the denominator. So altogether, we only have one negative, meaning our function would be below the x-axis at this point. So because we are looking for values of x that would make this particular function greater than 0, we only want to look or focus on the interval between 1 and 5. So our final answer, now as a final therefore statement, you must remember that x is actually in thousands, so we're not going to sell between 1 and 5 snowboards, but we're actually going to sell. Alright, so that's actually it for the second example, and we are done for today. As always, if you ever have any questions, make sure you're asking in class. Take care, guys.